here with Benny van der Goel from AOT Netherlands, in, uh, as the name implies, in Holland. Uh, ben has been uh, involved with uh, jets and uh, jet model flying really since the beginning, first with Pulse Jets. Well, and, uh, yeah, correct. We, we were already, uh, since we were a small kid, uh, involved in uh, modeling with, with, with that. You go to the airfield. Uh, later on, we wanted to have something special, and we started more or less with Pulse Jets, very noisy uh, jets, as you know. Um, but yeah, at a certain moment, the, the, the noise restrictions and the environment didn't allow that anymore. So at a certain moment, we did see a German uh, engineer named Kurt Schreckling with his small uh, home-built uh, gas turbine with the wooden compressor, uh, gas can as outer casing used. And we get inspired to what he uh, made. So at the first, we did uh, buy a book like so many people uh, did do this. And we start reading this book and get involved into the turbine technology. Well, still took uh, something like five years until we had something ourselves. This was more or less in the years 1990-91. And uh, we showed this to people and that got quite successful with, uh, with that type, type of engine. Uh, in fact, this was already uh, uh, a bit of an early Pegasus engine, which we used a year later in the, in the, in the company. Um, but things get uh, involved um, and gets uh, better and better. So around 1995, we did um, uh, start, founded the company, AMT in Netherlands, as you know. And uh, we start production of that one particular engine, that Pegasus engine, which we still have. It, it has been upgraded now uh, to about uh, an engine of 17 kilogram of uh, thrust. The early days, it had only just 10 kilograms. Um, but yeah, since then, we made um, quite a lot of engines and also new uh, developments. This is a Titan engine. In fact, the design is more or less the same as the first engines we had. It has a radial compressor from the automotive industry, a diffuser stage, a burning chamber, turbine stage, NGV with the turbine wheel. All engines are in fact built up like, like this. This engine will produce uh, about 400 newtons of uh, thrust, an RPM of uh, 79,000 RPM. Rather big engine for the modelers. So how does that compare? How does that uh, go into pounds and kilos? For those not familiar with well, newtons, um, 400 newtons is more or less 40 kilograms of thrust. But for the U.S. people, it's uh, 88 pounds of uh, of thrust at the maximum RPM. Yes. Engine is mainly designed for the UAV market, so not really for the modelers market, because you're going to need an awful big plane to to put this engine in. But there is a huge market in this uh, UAV business. And we did already do quite a good of business with our Olympus engine, which does um, a bit over 52 pounds. But there is a demand of even more thrust. And uh, that's why we um, developed over the last year this new engine, the, the fourth engine in fact we developed. And um, so we introduced it in these days in the Jet Power uh, 2007 event. And there will be full production of this engine uh, end of 2007. But uh, for someone who doesn't want something yeah. quite as large as this, uh, this is one of your regular, yes. the Mercury, I believe. This is typically a modeling engine. It has a thrust of about 18 uh, pounds, something like uh, 90 newtons, 88 to be uh, exact. Has a diameter of uh, 100 mil in uh, diameter, so rather small. Um, has a rather high RPM, but this comes with a small diameter of, uh, of rotor. This spins at 150,000 uh, RPM. But it's perfectly legal for uh, when there is a correct design. Um, and again, this, this engine is, is more or less also used for uh, um, applications in universities who want to have students get some experience. Also, this engine is used uh, for this. Uh, but mainly we sell this to the modelers. Now, this part here, for somebody seeing this for the first time, this, I believe, is the starter motor. Correct, yes. How does this work? Well, the, um, the very early engines were uh, without the starter and were air start engines. That's, more, that's how everybody, in fact, uh, uh, started with building their engines, uh, air start. Uh, but we also had to, uh, to struggle then with compressed air and scuba bottles. So, um, more like eight years ago, we, we designed uh, the starter system for, uh, for this kind of engine, and we use it now also on uh, different engines. Uh, with this, we can eliminate the air, it's more convenient. How it works is, uh, the shaft in fact is still uh, the same as an air start engine. In fact, we also leave the air start connector on, 
just in case uh, people want to have it still air start. Um, small electric motor. Um, when the, the, the operator, the customer, goes into a starting sequence, the starter motor is activated. A small uh, Bendex is coming out, is pushing on the front net, spinning up the engine in an in, in, uh, uh, in, in RPM range of about 6000 RPM. Um, same moment, uh, ignition will go over a glow plug and uh, connected uh, propane. When ignition is there, then the starter motor will engage again fully to the uh, about 10,000 RPM. Uh, then also fuel pump will, uh, will kick in and it will uh, go up in the uh, fuel slot to an uh, idle RPM for this engine, uh, 47,000. At that moment on the gas is uh, disconnected and in fact the engine is running on idle and the operator can use the throttle for, uh, for throttling up. You mention a lot of connections and disconnections. Yes. How does this work? That is all done electronically? Yeah, it's done uh, electronically uh, by uh, a system what we call an ECU, electronic control unit. The ECU has uh, inputs and outputs. Um, one of the important inputs is the, uh, the input from the operator, it means a throttle and switch. With switch we say the ECU uh, which mode it should go in, in starting or stopping condition. And the other input is the, the throttle, because the customer wants to choose a certain throttle setting. The output of this ECU is a fuel pump because fuel has to come in the engine for, for uh, increase the speed. Um, another output is a glow plug for, uh, for ignition. Um, two solenoid valves are also controlled by this ECU. One is the fuel solenoid, which goes open and close together when the fuel pump is activated or deactivated. And the gas solenoid valve goes open and, and, and close again in the correct sequence for the startup. Um, the last input is um, an EGT probe. Which, uh, which looks if the EGT is, is uh, working in the correct uh, uh, parameters. The EGT, that's the exhaust gas that's, temperature. That's the exhaust gas temperature, yes. And with this engine at operating, it will be around 650 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, well, these are the, the, the parameters to, uh, to have this engine running in a, in a safe condition, so that the operator only has to use the throttle and the ECU, in fact, does the rest. In, so, the uh, operator gives a certain throttle setting and according to this throttle setting, the ECU software uh, throttles the engine up to the desired uh, RPM. So we can say in the last 15 years, this is a very, very sophisticated unit. Correct. Uh, once installed into the aeroplane, the ECU looks after the operation exactly. of the aircraft, of the engine, and the pilot then can fly it with... Uh, he only has to worry about his plane, I guess, and not about the engine anymore. And maybe in the early days, certainly of the home builders, uh, the question if the engine would, would keep on running was always in their mind. But now with these electronics, uh, he only has to uh, give a certain throttle setting and the, the, the software in the ECU will, will do the rest for him. So what fuel do these run on? Um, most uh, um, users uh, try to get Jet A1 which is used in the, in the big aircraft. Uh, when this is not available, you can also use uh, paraffin for a heat stove, for example. Uh, we add uh, something like 4.5% of uh, oil with it for the lubrication of the bearings. And um, the kerosene or the paraffin uh, makes, in fact, no difference for the performance of the engine. Fantastic. Yes. Benny, these have really come on in the last few years. Yes. What what's going to happen next? How do you see the uh, the turbine industry expanding? Well, I think we st to improve this kind of turbine will be a difficult job because there is not much to improve anymore. What would be uh, still an advantage to uh, and to aim for is maybe uh, still less weight because the weight is something you're going to take up, and the less weight you have to take up, the better the, the plane will fly. Uh, less weight is one. A uh, small diameter is also a, a goal to, to work to, but at a certain uh, compressor you need always a certain diameter of engine. Uh, but you can see over the years, uh, with the same compressor size, the engine gets smaller and smaller.